Hello everybody! How are you? It's been a while, it's been over a year I think, but I'm so excited to just be like setting this camera up and talking to it. I don't think I realised how much I'd missed it until I started doing it. So hello, um, I hope you're doing well. I'm doing okay, studying, very busy, um, hence why I've not been making any videos. It's a Saturday, I have some time, I'm supposed to be studying, but instead I am gonna rant about Amazon. It's been two years since I was making videos regularly, but I've not changed. I was just on the train and was flicking through my phone, kind of bored, waiting for my stop. I flipped past the Goodreads app and the Storygraph app, which are next to each other in my phone, and it reminded me that I need to get around to doing this. So I'm doing it today and I'm talking about it with you guys. So if you aren't familiar, Goodreads is a website where you can track your reading habits. And then the Storygraph is a similar kind of thing, but it was set up later on. Maybe I'm gonna guess like five, six years ago, and I've had an account there since it was in beta mode, but I didn't really ever get to using it. So I think I transferred my Goodreads data over to the Storygraph when it was still in beta, then never did anything with it. I think at the time, not many people were using it. It wasn't really giving me what Goodreads gave me, which was like the social element. But now I think a lot more people are using the Storygraph. I'm assuming it's no longer in beta. It's been about five years. And the number one pro for me is that it's not owned by Amazon. I think, I think, that Goodreads is the only thing that I use, that still use, that is owned by Amazon and earns Amazon any money. Obviously there's like ads everywhere and that earns the money, but of the things I can help, I think Goodreads is the only one left. It's surprising how many things Amazon owns. I think to someone who wasn't aware, Goodreads would just seem like a cute DIY made by a book enthusiast book website. It's a bit clunky, it's a bit ugly, and you'd assume that was why but it's owned by Amazon. I think they just kind of bought it out so they could have more of a monopoly over book things and also then they can link back every book on there to buying it on their website. Most other things that Amazon acquires, they kind of invest a lot of money in. They look much more polished than Goodreads does, but that's just my theory, I don't know. There's so many Amazon things, you cannot escape them. There's Twitch, there's Amazon Pay, always asking me to pay with Amazon Pay, not saying that any other card or payment method is any better, but just the name Amazon gives me the ick. That's another thing actually. Amazon did that thing maybe a year or so ago where they decided they weren't gonna accept Visa anymore and then every single person had to take out another card just because they couldn't access Amazon. I think that any one entity that can make a whole population of people change their habits just like that, just so that they can still access their service, they've got too much power and I don't like it. They bought out Whole Foods, they've got their own like supermarket chain now. I was in Camden, it was probably about six months ago now. For the first time in years, it's the sort of place I used to go when I was a emo teenager and wanted to look at emo things. So it's very close place to my heart and I was so upset when I saw Camden again and it must have been summer 2022. It was just absolutely lost its whole soul. It was kind of a bit grimy before, but that was its character. It had a lot of heart. Now, the old market, which was closed for a long time, has been turned into like Box Park-esque shipping container shops. Everything looks exactly the same. Most of the shops are those souvenir American candy shops. I have to say, I haven't really looked around the market much because when I went there, it was closed, but it's just, it feels like there's no soul. So I was really upset about that. And then I was going to the Roundhouse for a gig to go see Daddy Frere. And opposite the Roundhouse, there was an Amazon is it an Amazon Fresh? The ones where you walk in and walk out without having to pay and it just knows what you've bought. And that just made me really upset and I was in a bad mood because of that. The gig cheered me up, but Amazon are everywhere. You cannot escape it. Or at least it's very hard to. And it's very ingrained in like daily life. Like it's just accepted that anything you want to order you can get on Amazon and you can get it with next day delivery. And that's become the norm, it's become the standard and anywhere else that can't offer that extremely fast delivery service it just doesn't stand a chance because people are so used to being able to get things as soon as they want them, it's instant gratification. I don't think that's good for us. Sometimes you can even get things showing up within two hours, like it's crazy. I can't think of any instance where I need that to be the case. Maybe once or twice a year there's something I urgently need and I can't get it in a shop and I need it by the next day and I've ordered something on Amazon, but it's so, so rare that I actually need that service that any other time that I can, I shop elsewhere. Having something arrive in the post gives you a little happiness boost. It's like a little burst of serotonin when you get a parcel, even if it's something you've ordered. Why not prolong that burst of serotonin, that excitement waiting for something to arrive by ordering something with slower shipping? Maybe that's just how my mind works but I'm quite happy to wait a week or two. It's very exciting. I don't feel like I can get really articulate about Amazon. 
I know that it does so many bad things. I don't know the statistics. I just know it's so bad for the planet, so bad for workers. And I think probably so bad for us. I don't like giving Jeff Bezos any more money. As tiny as my little influence would be over the whole Amazon customer base, I just don't want to be involved. So today I'm going to transfer for good my Goodreads data onto the story graph. Like I said, I did do this before. I'm guessing about five years ago. It might have been sooner, I don't know. But hopefully there's a way to resubmit the Goodreads data. Not that I've read many more books since then. I haven't really read much in the last few years. First thing is to try and log in to both accounts. I don't know if I know the password to either. Okay, I'm into both. That was kind of easier than I expected. And according to the story graph, my recent reads are Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Field Notes on Love, Normal People, and Grown Ups by Marianne Keys. I think I read all of those during the 2020 first lockdown. So that's not too out of date. How do I integrate the two? Goodreads import. Please note the Goodreads import is only designed to be done as an onboarding step once. If you do it multiple times, you risk introducing book and review duplicates to your StoryGraph account. <laughs> you can manually adjust all your records or delete all of your book reviews and start again from a blank slate. Yes, I want to do that. Okay, and then if I go back in and then I import my Goodreads library, it takes three days to import your data. Ah, okay. <laughs> I didn't anticipate that. That's fine. Oh, reading preferences survey. I don't read anymore. It's really, really bad. I do listen to audiobooks, but not as much as I used to. I did bring, can you see them on the shelf behind me? There's a stack of about six books, maybe, that I brought when I moved here almost two years ago. And have I read any of them? No, I've started two of them, but I haven't finished them. So they're my physical books and I'm not buying more physical books until I've read some of those because otherwise they're just gonna fill up my space and not get used. But audiobooks, I just use whatever they have available on my local library app, my library's with Libby. And actually I've got a library card with the City of London and Surrey Libraries now because you can get one, just so you know. Very useful information, you can get one where you work and where you live. There's a lot of choice to be honest, but they don't have everything. Like I say, I, I don't really have enough time to read, so that's not a problem for me right now. Unless there's suddenly a book that I really want to get in audio form, then I'll consider alternatives. But yeah, I'm not touching Audible with a barge pole, not just because it's owned by Amazon, but anything that you have to pay per month for. It's a scam, I don't believe in it. So it's asking me my five favorite genres. To be completely honest, I don't really know any genres that I don't like. I'm not a huge fan of poetry. Mathematics is a genre. I'm not a fan of magical realism, unpopular opinion, but I just, I can't be bothered with it. I don't know whether that, I don't know if this quiz even does anything. Which of these things, if any, most turn you off a book? Flat characters for sure, poor writing for sure, dense writing. Does that just mean when they use too many words to get that point across because I don't like that? Moving on. I am never slash rarely in the mood for books that are adventurous, challenging, dark, emotional, funny, hopeful, informative, inspiring, lighthearted, mysterious, reflective, relaxing, sad or tense. I guess I'm not in the mood for anything challenging. Oh, it's making me select five favourite genres. Let's choose music, memoir, literary, LGBT, gender? Is gender a genre? I don't think it is. This website is so nice and clean compared to Goodreads. It just looks so modern and fresh. I mean, I know I haven't given it much to go on, but none of this appeals to me at all. <laughs> it's not managed to import my stuff yet, which is fair enough, but it then can't predict what I'd like to read next. So since I think Christmas, I've read maybe three books from the library from audiobook form and I haven't added them to Goodreads because I knew I wanted to switch across to the story graph I just hadn't sorted it out yet so I can add those to here now so I've gone back on Libby for my reading history and I think the last book <laughs> why was I reading this I don't know what I was doing but I read Strawberry Crush by Jean Yeur in September it was rubbish I gave it one star on Goodreads I don't know why I read it I think I was just it was the 9th of September so it's just before exams I think I just wanted something easy to just shove on in the background and I was like that looks like something I would have read as a kid give it a try it was awful but it wasn't aimed at a 25 year old girl so <laughs> that was probably why I started reading Dracula and didn't finish it so I'm not gonna bother logging that and then I read a book called The Companion so let's try and find that it was a murder mystery book. Ooh, it's got a buy button on here. If I click buy, does it take me to Amazon? No, <laughs> yes. And then I can add my dates based on here. I, t 
took it out on the 13th of January and I finished it on the 22nd of January. There's data tracking everything about me, but sometimes it's useful. It's really strange. I've just had a realization the last time I read loads of books, I always feel like I'm cheating when I say read, but I mean in audio form, I, it's not cheating, but it still feels like it is. But the last time I went through a phase of reading loads of books and consuming loads of things was when I was also in an intense study period. So September, I had two exams and I read three books, or I tried to read three books. One of them was Dracula, which is very long to be fair. In January, when I started studying again, I took out another three books. That's interesting. It's like I can consume media and I can participate as a human in society when I should be studying. So it's just procrastination. Interesting. I just choose the most random things that I wouldn't pick out if I was given a pile of books, but I also then read a book about the Spice Girls. I'm a late 90s baby, so I don't really remember when the Spice Girls were active, but a lot of my friends are slightly older and do, so like, I feel like I've absorbed Spice Girls culture. So the book was called What Would the Spice Girls Do? How the Girl Power Generation Grew Up, and it was by Lauren Bravo. It was very interesting, it was kind of a collection of essays about the Spice Girls and how they influenced different areas of life and culture. I'll add the dates later because that's not interesting, but what I'm interested in is how you can change the edition that you read. There's a audiobook version, so I can switch to this edition. It's so similar to Goodreads, it seems to have all the exact same features, but just better done. Better done? Betterly? No, that's not right. <laughs> Betterly is not a word. Finally, I am currently reading Dave Grohl's book called The Storyteller. It's good so far. I'm about maybe 25% of the way through. It's read by Dave Grohl himself if you get the audiobook. It should be an interesting one. Let me know if you've read it or have any suggestions of books for me to read, especially if they're easily accessible at the library. The other place that I do occasionally get books from is the charity shops. You know how much I love a charity shop. They are my favourite hobby, I think. Like if I wasn't filming this video right now, I'd probably be spending my Saturday going around the charity shops. And in fact, there could still be time. There's an hour left until they close. So maybe? No, no, I have to study. I do have to study. If there is anything specific you would like to see from me, do let me know. Obviously, I cannot guarantee that I will make it because once a year, is a push for me, apparently, to make a video. Um, but I do want to get better. I'm not gonna say I am, because that's unrealistic, but I really do enjoy making them. And it's just a shame that I haven't been able to for so long. But yeah, hope you're doing well. Thank you for listening to me rant about how much I hate the A word. And I will see you hopefully very soon. <laughs>